So hopefully you can all see um, on the screen there what we're going to be talking about tonight is working with children, young people, families and communities and the various programmes that we have here in TU Dublin in the School of Social Science, Law and Education um, that would allow you to then go on to work with children, young people, families and communities. So uh, we'll just give it another minute and see if anybody else is going to join and then we'll get going. And we've got um, a few people joining us who are working within the field um, and somebody uh, who is a current student on one of our programmes. And they'll give you a perspective on what it's like to study the various programmes we'll be talking about. And if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat. And Fiona and Linda are dealing with those and they'll um, feed them back to us. We will have opportunities for questions and answers throughout the session. So please do feel free to ask any questions either tonight or email us, get in touch with us tomorrow um, and we'll happily answer any of your questions. So uh, we might get going because uh, we don't want to keep you too long. The sun seems to have finally come out this evening and I'm sure uh, many of you want to get out and about and not be sitting in listening to us talking. OK, so you, as I said, you're all very welcome uh, tonight to this webinar, which is just outlining um, the various programmes you can study to enable you to work with children, young people, families and communities here at TU Dublin. So just a quick outline of what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to do a brief introduction to all the programmes to start with. So we're going to look at community development and youth work programme. We have Michael, who's a current community development student. We have Kate, who's a graduate of a community development youth work programme. We have questions and answers after both of those. We have um, a brief outline then of our social care programme and we have Martin, who's a graduate and a social care manager, who's going to come in and give us um, a little talk on that. And then we have some questions and answers at the very end. Um, and we're trying to give you a bit of information on all the programmes. But as I said, if you have any questions, please do get in touch. Everybody will have different questions. OK, so please do get in touch with us afterwards. So. Uh, we're going to start with early childhood education and care. We have three programmes um, in our three campuses on uh, early childhood education and care. So I'm going to run through the programmes very quickly. So, um, you know, there'll be a lot of information. But as I said, uh, I'm trying to give you the most important information. So if you're interested in working with young children and families, early childhood is probably um, an area you'd consider. And we were just highlighting some of the main points in um, our program, for example, some of the weekly experiences of lectures. But we've also got smaller tutorials. We have an outdoor classroom. We have outdoor play modules. So it's less of a sitting in the classroom kind of experience. This is some of our students and one of our lecturers at the very front there who um, went to climb um, one of the mountains and they do one of their modules, their second year students, they do one of their modules outside in um, the woods. So it's about learning about how children can use the outdoors. So uh, that's a part of our early childhood program. Uh, one of the, some of the things that you'd learn about in early childhood, if you're interested in working with children, if you're interest, interested in outdoor games, working as a team, uh, art, drama, music, designing activities, psychology, health and well-being. These are the kind of things that might suit you then to study early childhood. So this is some uh, pictures of one of our um, excursions that some of our students in Grange Gorman went on when they went to Norway uh, to see early childhood settings over there. So there's quite a lot of variety within the programme. Some of the things you discover, how children grow and develop, why some children play together while others like to play alone. So if you ever see a group of children together, some of them are happy enough playing with each, other's, with each other and some of them quite like to play on their own. So you'd learn about why that is. How can we help children learn the alphabet, learn their letters, learn how to speak? What is the benefit of reading to children? Um, how can we encourage parents to play with their children? And how can we support children with additional needs or difficulties? So they're just some of the things that if you're interested in, this programme might suit you. There's some of the things that our students learn about in their first year. And we have some pictures there of our students within first year 
who are um, you know, doing some outdoor modules, as I said, doing health and well-being. And the bottom picture is some of our first year students doing their orientation, doing some games, getting to know each other and planning for the work they will do with children when they go out on their placement. Um, some of our graduates from early childhood, we, we, we're trying to highlight with all of our programmes what you can do when you finish these programmes. So we're trying to look at what our graduates are doing at the moment and give you some information on that. So our graduates are early years educators, then room leaders, pedagogical leaders within early year settings, supervisors, managers, child or family support workers, some of them are working in Tusla, in Bernardo's and in other early childhood services. And some of them are working with families. So there's a variety, um, but I suppose the focus and the, the common theme there is working with children. So that's our early childhood programme in a very short uh, couple of minutes. So as I said, if you have any more information, please do come back to us on that. We're going to move on now to our second programme, which is community development and youth work. Um, and this is the one where we will have a graduate and a um, current student coming to talk to you about this programme in a couple of minutes. So community development and youth work, they're two separate uh, terms. So it's one programme and you uh, graduate with a qualification in community development and in youth work. So we have a level seven programme, which is three years, and we have a level eight programme, which is four years. Both programmes are based on the Blanchestown campus. They're AIEB and NSETS endorsed, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, in later on. We have placement in year two and year three for a full semester in this programme. We have small class work again, tutorials on campus, agency visits and a lot of work in the community. And in the pictures, we've tried to highlight some of the different work that our students have done over the years. Um, so you'll see different pictures of different activities that are going on. And as I said, the main focus uh, with all of these programmes is you won't be just sitting in a classroom or in a lab. You will be getting involved. You will be doing things. So if you were thinking about this program, some of the questions you might ask yourself, you know, would this program suit me? Well, do you enjoy working with people? Do you enjoy working with people in their communities? Have you an interest in social issues, social change? Do you feel committed to promoting social justice, promoting equality and human rights? Do you feel passionate about global issues, about cultural diversity? And do you have an interest in supporting and empowering young people? So this programme is really about helping young people and communities to reach their full potential. So if you are really passionate about how about encouraging and developing people's potential, then this might be the programme for you. Uh, what kind of modules will I study? So youth work, psychology, community arts, addiction studies, culture, community development, group facilitation, sociology. They're just a handful of the modules that you will study in community development and youth work program. Again, this is some of our students doing their different projects. Um, and we just wanted to highlight some of the different things that go on within the programs for you. Uh, our graduates then, what are our graduates doing when they finish? Well, at the moment, we have graduates who are working in youth projects. We've one of them joining us in a few minutes to talk to you. We have graduates in school completion programmes, Garda Youth Diversion programmes, Youth Advocate, Early Intervention, Community Support Workers, Probation Services, Community Development Organisations and working within local authorities. So quite a spread of our graduates. Um, who are out there with community development and youth work degrees. OK, uh, and uh, the last programme I'm just going to give you some brief information on is social care. And then we'll move on to uh, possibly the more interesting people telling you what it's like to go and work when you're finished studying. So social care, um, again, it's on the three campuses. So it's in Grange Gorman, it's in Blanchetown and it's in Tala. So they have uh, four different codes. They're a mix of level seven and level eight programs. And all our social care programs are approved by CORU. And if you want to be recognised as a social care worker, if you want to work as a social care worker in Ireland, you must be registered with CORU and you must complete a um, an approved programme. So all of these programmes are approved by CORU. So what is social care? Well, social care is a relationship based approach 
to planning and providing care, protection, support and advocacy to service users. So you're working with vulnerable individuals and groups who experience marginalization, disadvantage or special needs. So they work directly with service users to provide care and meet their physical, psychosocial and emotional needs. So that is the definition of social care taken from Corio, as I said, who are the social care regulator. Uh, what will you study if you study social care? You would study sociology, social policy, applied social studies, advocacy, legal and regulatory framework, psychology and well-being, uh, social care work with older people and people with disabilities. So again, a, a range of modules you will uh, you will cover over the three or four years. And you will have two placements. You'll do a placement in year two and in year three. And that's common across all of our programmes. And it's something that uh, the people who are coming to talk to you in a couple of minutes will talk to you about the importance of that placement, where you get an opportunity in all of our programmes to apply what you've learned in the classroom, what you've learned in those smaller groups in your tutorials to practice and go out and experience what it's really like. And it also helps you to understand what area you might like to work in when you finish. Um, so what do our social care graduates do? What are they doing at the moment? And we have, you know, quite a few social care graduates every year. They are working with children and adolescents in residential care. They're working with people with intellectual or physical disabilities. They're working with people who are homeless, people who have alcohol or drug dependency. Again, possibly in school completion programmes, aftercare services, and sometimes with older people and recent um, people arriving into Ireland. So that is different to early childhood and different to community development and youth work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have Michael, if he's here, um, who is one of our current students on the programme. He is currently in third year. Um, and I'm just checking if he is actually here. Um, and we're going to have Michael talk um, to us about the programme and what it's like. We also have Shirley, oh, there he is. Uh, Shirley, do you want to say anything before we um, bring Michael in? Shirley is one of our lecturers. Hi there. Um, yes, I uh, lecture on the Community Development and Youth Work Programme and also on um, some of the social care modules within that programme. So we'll answer any of your questions later on. Um, but we go through questions with um, the students and graduates first, and maybe that'll answer some of the queries that you have. Right, okay. Uh, I think I have found the right person, uh, and I'm just going to turn on their camera, Michael, and their microphone. Right. Okay, just give us a second here. That's it. Michael, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear you? Yeah, great. Okay, so this is uh, Michael, who is one of our current students. He's in third year and he's in work at the moment, so he's kindly agreed to come and join us for a few minutes. And Shirley, uh, you're going to ask Michael some questions. Sure thing. Hi, Mick. How are you? How's it going, Shirley? How are you? Not so bad. Um, so I suppose the first question I have for you is, seeing as all of these people are kind of in that boat at the moment, what made you choose community development and youth work as a programme of study? Um, to be honest, lads, I sort of um, fell into it by accident. I was unsure what I was doing. I had um, I'd been in a career for 20 years. I wanted to change to do something I was a little bit passionate about. Um, so I went back when I was 39. My wife was adamant I was too old to be a professional footballer. So I had to keep looking to see was there anything else I could do. Um, so I actually got talking to, to um, a lady in the admin office in the college and she brought up this course. Um, and it, I think that the broadness of it really interested me. It was um, the different roles that you could get out of it. Um, you know, you, you can work in youth services, you work in addiction, you could work with county councils, a sports development office. It was just really, really broad and gave you loads of options. Um, I would be coming from a, a sports background with coaching. I've coached GEA for 20 odd years. Um, and I suppose it, I didn't know it at the time, but it's really, really transferable um, to youth work in particular. Um, so look, I suppose to answer it 
by accident spoke to a girl in the college who who really really um sold it to me and and the broadness of your options that you get coming out of it that's great thank you michael um and so now if we fast forward to you are in third year what um has it been like studying for the degree uh well i suppose for me scared the life out of me i'd never been to college um it was uh, an experience going 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 in i suppose at, at my age anyway i was 39 starting off but um it was challenging of course it was um but i i think there's something i don't want to give you a big head here now but there's something probably more homely about tu blanchard's down than than other colleges it, you know it's you have support that you the the staff are really really good you know if, if you're interested and you're, you're willing and you you want to learn you you get help from every everyone you go to do you know what i mean so you're always getting support if you're struggling that there's always services around to help um the the students in my class anywhere were brilliant um you know they're they're mad but but it's a great group and you know we all help each other through it so i just found it was a really supportive environment um and look everybody's going to have struggles at different stages during during the years but um it's it's a real just hands-on everybody pulling everybody through and helping each other out which was great True, and there's a, a mix of both mature students and direct entry, so it leaves a nice dynamic in the classroom. Thankfully, I wasn't yet on my own. <laughs> OK, so um, what's the best part of the degree so far, if you were? Um, I would say, OK, well, firstly, the the dynamic in, in, in the class is really, really good. The support from the, the lecturers and the college is very good. Placement, I think, is brilliant. You know, you're, you're bringing your learnings from the class to go out into services and really see what it's like on the ground and the fact that you get two full semesters on placement and you do one i suppose for, for anyone listening you do one in community and one in youth work so it gives you a, a real feel of which one you want to you want to go for like i was heading off last year and i was going i'm not doing youth work no way that's not for me um and i done four or five months whatever the placement was and came out of went Geez, I love you, work. <laughs> I, I could really do this. Like so, you know, it gives you a real feel of of where where you're gonna end up. Um and and, and the opposite to that, if 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 you don't like one side, you, you get the, the the opposite of it then and you can get a feeling of which direction you want to go in going forward. So placement really, really helps with that, I think. Yeah, and as you said, it's such a broad scope um with both the modules and the the options that come out of the um, degree that it's nice to approach with an open mind and uh, kind of take things as they happen. Yeah, not not what I did, but yeah, after, <laughs> after you got it, um, I suppose that's exactly it. Go, go in with an open mind. I had decided, no, no, I'm going community. I'm definitely going community. And if you ask me now, I'm I'm part time working in a community setting, but I love me placement in youth work last year, so I, I'm literally just leaving options open at this stage you know and it's, it is that broad that there's so many different services that you can get involved in on both sides um and, and again that that's the real selling thing for it is is the, the broadness of the options you have available that you're coming out yeah and that uh, that applied nature that you leave with uh, perhaps a couple of references but also a bit of experience and knowing a little bit more about what it is that you want to do yeah. 100%. So what um, make then would would have been the challenges so far or the main challenges that you've found? Outside of my oldness, um, <laughs> starting off, I, uh, I look, I suppose that, that for, for me, it was it was going in first time ever in college and um, not really knowing what the crack was, how it worked. Was I able for it? Your imposter syndrome going, good God, what am I doing here? Do you know, um, I don't think that ever totally goes away, but within Blanchardstown, like it is so supportive, you know, and, and if you are struggling, somebody will come and somebody will help and you can go and ask for help. And, and there is, I mean, that's that's constant all the time. You have somebody you can touch base with and say, look, I'm, I'm having a hard time here or there's assignments coming up and I'm not sure. Um, and people do genuinely want you to get through it and, and help you through it. So, you know, so what it is, it was, yeah, scared the life out of me starting off. Um, but people really do pull you through you know and everybody's going to have ups and downs but if you have that support system around you you'll be all right, right. and look at you now in your tree <laughs> i look about 40 yeah. years older <laughs> you, you mentioned the, uh, about the the campus and the support that was gotten and community development and youth work is one of the programs that is delivered solely on the blanchestown campus at the moment so um 
Is there anything else you'd like to say about studying in TU Dublin, Mick? Um, look, no, I, I just found it, I suppose, for me going in at this stage, it, it was, I was worried and it took me a long time to go, you know, to move away from what am I doing here? Um, and I just found it very, very, you know, people genuinely want to look after you, want want to see you succeeding. Um, you know, it's it's a nice campus. It's it's cosy enough. You know what I mean. So you like I would know a lot of the people from second year or fourth year because you're all doing the same sort of program. Um, and even at that, that you know, you have programs running there where you've mentoring programs. So somebody from fourth year, if you're in fourth year, can link in with you and help you through it. Um, and it's all these little small bits that 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 make it make it a lot easier if if you're going in. But I just think. For, for this course in particular, I mean, if, and it was, it was for me as I had a career for, for 20 years and, and just wanted to do something I was passionate about. Um, and if you're, if you, if you have a proper passion around helping communities or helping young people be the best you can be, um, it's a brilliant course. It's really, really good. Um, and it's, it, it's something that that's definitely worthwhile anyway. That's great, Mick. Um, and I suppose to finish up, what, what's your plan for the future? What, what awaits you? I'm going to win the lotto, Shirley, and retire. <laughs> um, again, well, there you are. I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm just coming towards the end of tour year now, so I have decisions to make over the summer as to what I do. Like, you will get job offers. Um, it, it's a small enough field, um, and people know each other. So anybody who's who's thinking about it, um, do you know, when you're in college and, and you're, you're doing the best you can, you could come across somebody who's interviewing you a year later, you could be interviewing somebody else. You know, it is small um, and it's great because people will advocate for each other and um, they will push it. You know, they, they, they try and see everybody doing their best once once they know you're 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 interested and involved in it. Um, I forgot the question, Charlie. What was it? <laughs> what are you going to do in the future? Mick? Yeah, still in, still undecided. Um, I, I I Open have the option it. now of, of taking jobs, of going back doing fourth year, of taking a job, deferring for a year, going back. Um, and even at that, will I go into youth work or will I go into addiction? I'll just wait and see. And I think I have that open mindedness that I didn't have going in. Um, so thankfully, I have another couple of months to decide fully, but you do have all of them options to, to weigh up. That's great, Mick. Thanks very much for um, talking to us this evening. And we'll just remind people that if you have questions, stick them in the chat for now as they accord to you and we'll come back to them at the end. And um, we're going to talk to Kate, who's a graduate of the Youth Community Development and Youth Work Programme now. Yeah, I'm just going to turn on Kate's camera. Uh, Mick, thanks very much. Are you OK to hang around for um, a couple of minutes there in case anybody has any questions for you? Yeah, no worries. Just living Brilliant. In OK, we're just going to... Um, uh, we're going to let uh, Kate in now, and Kate is currently working. She just finished up uh, last year in the degree, and um, I'm just going to just give me a second now. I am getting here slowly but surely. Uh, allow my allow camera. So, Kate, uh, Kate, you should be able to talk. Are you, there, you, are you with us? Maybe, yeah, no, definitely. So, technological university. Yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> Two lectures in the room. Always, always the, days the, problem. Of, the, the days Hi. of online. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, Kate is, Kate is one of our graduates and um, she is in work at the moment. So, she's kindly snuck out for a few minutes. Um, and I suppose just to point out, Mick was a mature, I think he mentioned it a couple of times, he was a mature <laughs> student coming in um, and uh, Kate came straight from school. So just uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody felt that if they were interested in this programme, that it, it is a possibility for them. So um, I let you fire away there, Shirley. Thanks, Kate. Thanks. Um, like I said, Kate is a graduate and she's currently working in the sector. So if you want to just let people know kind of who you work with, what you do and what your role is. Yeah, so um, I'm a youth worker with Faroga. So my role is providing out of school uh, out of school supports to young people in the form of informal education, per se. So yeah, I work with Faroga. Perfect. And what does a typical day look like? Um, that's 
that's the great thing about this job like a typical day you can't really just say what does a typical day work like um we do mainly do group work so in mine anyway we do group work with different groups of young people in different needs based kind of work so you'd be working after school with young people who would come into your group and you'd do different programs different arts and crafts different stuff like that but yeah a day is never the same in my job anyway keeps it interesting yes um, I suppose uh, the the opportunities after studying are, are something that people think about a lot so how, how was it finding work or looking for yeah uh, finding work was uh, as Mick was saying as well it's you're they're crying out for people to work so well like I did my placement in second year in Faroga and as soon as I was finished they wanted you to work once they realized that you enjoy your work you put everything into your work they want you to work so I actually got part-time work while I was in third year and then once I was nearly finished third year I seen there was an opening in a different part of Faroga so I applied for that so and I think it was the day after I finished third year I started in that job so yeah it was pretty easy to get uh, work anyway once you're out there and the placement really helps as well. Yeah just quite a few of our students get get job offers or, or some form of part-time or full-time work out of their placements um so if you were now that you're in the world of work if you look back on your degree and your time and study case is there anything or what did you learn in college that you found most helpful within your work or yeah I think especially on placement you see firsthand the theory that you learn being implemented and you're like oh that's what they meant by that so I think that was one of the things the theory stands out to you once you start working there and once you start seeing it also in our degree like we work in smaller groups and they're smaller classrooms so I think that stands out to you in your work because as I said I do work with groups so learning about the dynamic in your own little group can help with say if conflict comes arise in groups and you do learn about conflict management as well and different other like there's many skills that you learn in college that will help you to do your work and you there's other things like facilitating so you learn how to facilitate your groups you learn different games and activities that you can use as icebreakers then as well in your groups so practical things as well as yeah so practical things. and theory as well yeah and they all marry together then when you go on place yeah <laughs> with any luck. um so what would you say is the best thing about your work or your job hey um i think the best thing about my job is the, f the feeling you get for knowing that you're supporting the young people and also their families and the difference you're making in their lives as well and yeah I think it's just I love working with people and I love talking to people so yeah I think it's just the working with the young people and seeing seeing them come back with like achievements or different things that they tell you is it's very rewarding. Super. Um, I hate to bring it up and talk uh, money, but uh, it is one of the things that people are are concerned about. So with regards to, I suppose, paying conditions when it comes to youth work, how have you found that? Yeah, I've found it really good. Like it starts at 36 grand a year and then it, it uh, increases every year, increments every year. So, yeah. Super. So there's a bit of progression or, or opportunities within that. Yeah. And in my job, there is mileage and all those things. So, yeah. Expenses and stuff. Great. Expenses. Um, yeah. So what what's the future hold for you, Kate? What, what is it that you hope for? Or if you fast forward five years, what are you going to be up to? Yeah, so obviously I left after three years. So I had my level seven. So I always said that maybe in the future once I worked for a bit as I went from straight from school I kind of wanted to get out and start working so I think one thing that I could think I could do is maybe go back and do fourth year but that would kind of lead on to another thing I was thinking of eventually going into management so I feel the level four would help with that push to become management so yeah that's kind of but I'm happy where I am and I don't see myself moving for very long. <laughs> All right for now. That's great. Okay, thanks very much. And I suppose I, I should mention that there um, is a level seven, and which is an ordinary degree, and a level eight, which is an honours degree course run through um, Blanchardstown. The two courses are the same, and um, the only difference is the entry points um, for both of them. And at year three, you'll exit on the level seven program, and um, but you can add on. 
the the fourth year for the honours degree afterwards. So if people want to graduate twice, <laughs> it's the level seven into the level eight programme. The level eight is four years straight through, but there is a, an option of exit awards. If um, anything happens in between that, you can exit at level seven with your ordinary degree also. Thanks for that, Kate. Much appreciated. No Thank you. I suppose we'll take questions for anybody who, um, if anybody has any questions in relation to this programme. Uh, and just to say thank you very much, Kate and uh, Mick. I think it was very uh, clear and very useful to hear what it's like um, <laughs> to study and to work in the area. And I see Liam, one of our lecturers, has joined and I'm sure he's beaming with pride to see our two, uh, our, our recent graduate and our current student talking so well about the programme, but also talking about what it's like on the ground, what it's really like working um, when you finish your degree and what it's like um, being a student in TU Dublin, I suppose it should be mentioned, both Mick and Kate started during COVID, so they didn't have the ideal start to um, to studying and, you know, life was very difficult generally at that time. So um, they were they were both a great, um, a great, a great personality, I suppose, to have in the classroom. Shirley, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, I taught both of them and it was always great to have them in the class and they did have lots of support from others around them um, at quite a difficult time during COVID. So if anybody has any questions, um, I think there's a, a few questions that have been answered in the chat, people asking about different things, interviews and um, that kind of thing uh, that are some, sometimes mature students are called for interviews. But I don't see anything in particular coming up. Um, I think maybe Mick and Kate were very clear on what they did and why they did it and how they did it. So um, just want to thank you again for joining us and um, go back and look after those young people, work with those young people that you're currently. And um, we might get in touch with you in the coming days if anybody sends us in any questions. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on now to social care. Um, and we have Martin Thornton. Let me just add Martin. Uh, OK, um, who is going to uh, who is going to talk to us about social care. And um, Martin is a past student and a current manager within social care. So um, he has a unique perspective on social care and what it's like to be working and study um, social care also. Can you hear us, Martin? Let's see, is he here? Is that him coming in? There he is. Hi, Martin. You're on mute. There. Yeah. Now, Brilliant. can you hear and see me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank right, you very right, much. Right. You're, you're, you're following too hard now um, interviews there. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No, no um, pressure so at all. I'm going to hand over to Shirley. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand over to Shirley and she's going to run through and um, just ask you a couple of questions and feel no free problem. to add to it as we go along. OK. That's great, Martin. Thanks for joining us again. Sure. I suppose um, when or we have people here with us, um, if you want to just explain to people what it is that your role is within social care and what um, kind of what you typical day might look like. Or, yeah. OK, well, it's not, I may go back to, I suppose, start by going back to, I went back to the college as a mature student, back to TU Dublin back in the days, a while ago now at this stage. And I suppose I was lucky enough to get supported by my employer at the time. They were very much promoting at the time, getting staff back into education who may have just come into the field at a time when you didn't require, you know, an academic qualification you're in there basically based on being good at activities let it be football or you know playing pool i was pretty handy at the playstation so that got me a lot of <laughs> kudos with the kids but i suppose that you know at the time i remember i was doing stuff that i didn't actually realize i didn't equate it to work i didn't see it as work it was fun it was getting the kids out, it was building relationships, it was bringing them hiking, going camping. It was doing a lot of stuff that I couldn't believe at the time I was actually getting paid to do. But I suppose, you know, as time progressed, uh, you know, I couldn't just keep doing that. We had to kind of like put a bit of, like I suppose we had to bring 
bit of professionalism into it all and kind of like, you know, see where we could support uh, the, the young people that we were looking after. So at the time that I was working for the HSE and they, I suppose they went around looking for staff to go back to college at the time because not we didn't have to be in college. So they really went out looking for staff to go back. And I, of course, put my two hands up at the time. I was only delighted to go back. Um, but what I realised when I was doing the college course uh, was when I started realising and understanding some of the theories that are out there, everything just clicked into place. I was able to put, uh, you know, some theory to my practice which was like a bit of a game changer for me and a real kind of like light bulb moment that I wasn't just playing football. I wasn't just having, a, you know, a PlayStation game or bringing a young person up hiking. There was mean, you know, there was additional meaning behind it. It was yeah, an opportunity to, you know, really get in there and do some really good therapeutic work with a young person, especially young people who come from a traumatic background who have trauma attached to them, like creating those positive experiences really benefited the the young person um, in their day-to-day -day interactions with other adults. So for me, going back to college was really enlightening and it really, I suppose it has had a major influence on my career ever since. Great. Um, I suppose uh, there's a, a, a lot of uh, scope to a social care degree. So to ask what a social care worker does um, it's probably a little yeah. broad, but it, it, um, kind of the areas that social care workers or a social care graduate might work in might be useful. Yeah, well, I suppose a social care graduate, you know, they're they have a multitude of areas they could go into at various levels. I suppose when you so when you look at you know you can go in at a very low you know a kind of like local level under a metal model project within the community. Um, getting into a community setting where you're supporting, doing a lot of family support work, maybe, you know, dropping in, doing a lot of bit of, um, bit of at home access work and um, working alongside social workers within the home. Um, or you could progress into residential care, which would be maybe a step or two up, you know, um, it would be looking after young people who can't be managed within their home environment and within their local community. Um, that requires, I suppose, you know, you're working within a staff team, being supported by management and um, within an organization and it would be very much you know kind of like providing that day-to-day -day stability for children who need care so it might be facilitating bringing them to school it might be supporting them through family access just day-to-day -day living making sure that they have their primary needs met educational needs their health needs you know helping them i suppose make positive choices and again always trying to promote um working them back into a normal living environment, if at all possible. And then that goes up further again, whereby you could be uh, you could apply for a job to work in a special care facilities. That's would be my background, which, again, it's a bit more confining. It's based on the high court order, but it's really dealing with a lot of high end challenging behaviors such as self harm, you know, physical verbal outbursts and um, a lot of property damage initially. But very quickly, you can kind of get on top of that and support the young person again, getting back to a, a lower level intervention, let it be community setting or, you know, in some cases back to the family home. Um, so it varies an awful lot. Um, but there's the scope of work, you know, the principles, I suppose, come. it comes back to really that relationship piece. It really comes back down to being able to make a connection, build a relationship with a, a young person. Um, and support them. So there's a lot of, I was it's a lot of. Um, I was looking at the social care workers. A lot of their day to day work is observing behaviour and knowing the best way to respond to that behaviour. So you have to be quite dynamic in your approach and be adaptable to whatever situation comes up. So it might be you might simply some days might just sit and listen and give no advice. Just be there to hear the child. Another day you might witness a behaviour and you might have an opportunity to come in and give advice on how things could be done differently. Or another day you could be just a shoulder to cry on. Um, um, sorry, Martina, are you finished? 
No, go ahead. Yes, you're sorry. Not, not you um, it's just you mentioned there are a couple of, uh, of things which I, I think it might be interesting to come back to because there tends to be a little bit of, of confusion sometimes around social workers and social care yeah. workers, especially when people are considering courses of study and maybe in those initial stages. And you mentioned a couple of things in terms of relationship and that day to day support and that direct work um, with people. So maybe a little bit more around that might be yeah. useful for people to understand. So if I was to give you a kind of like a typical day of maybe the social care, social care work that the staff that I would look after um, would be doing in the morning time, it would be going in in the morning and getting a good proper handover from your colleagues. So it's really important to commit to being on time for work to get information from your from your colleagues from the previous shift in relation to stuff coming up during the day for the young people that you'll be looking after. So I suppose being really on point in relation to time management. So being reliable, turning in for work every day. Consistency is key in this area. You have to be, you know, available coming in in the morning, getting your hand over, you know, then looking at what the day, you know, involves. If, you know, you're working on, you're working off plans an awful lot of time. So it could be, support the young person on family access, education, it could be on site, off site, it could be um, ensuring that they're getting up in the morning. I always say, one of the things I always say, Shirley, is one of the hardest and most challenging things I've ever had to do in my career is going down and getting the young person motivated to get up out of bed, to get up and have a breakfast at nine, half nine in the morning and have a normal you know, start time like everybody else. And um, that I, when I started my career, that was one of the hardest things I used to do because you have to pull on every skill in your toolbox to try and motivate a young person to get out of bed. Because the question, why would they want to get up? Mm. If they're coming from trauma, staying in the bed under the duvet is probably a really safe place to be. And we've all felt like that time. So, yeah. So if you're a staff member, you you're walking down to knock on a door to see if somebody get up you have to go down with a bag of tricks in relation to trying to get that young person up out of bed dressed showered down to have some you know so put some food in their belly to get them to uh, uh, maybe into education or engaging in family support work or whatever so that was always a difficulty but if you're working within the team and you get team dynamics you'll realize you're you're not on your own there's other people can help you out so that was a key learning point as well learning that uh, i'm not on my own i can call on somebody maybe who's a better relationship or who knows that young person longer to help me out to get in there if, you know to support the young person then mm -hmm. as the day progresses a lot of work is around just being aware of behaviors and obs observation Rec you know being able to be in a position to see things before nearly they happen if that makes sense so it's like you know okay you know that, that was a bad phone call okay i need to get in there and support the young person now so it's all these little micro interventions is what i call them it's been mm. ready to intervene before something kind of like gets um unmanageable for that service user yeah coming in at the right time yeah perfect um and i suppose like everybody when they're starting out on, on a course of study are interested in what the prospects are with regards to work is yeah. it um, good easy to find work within the social care environment is there jobs out there it's at the moment okay i suppose is it easy yes it's easy to find work but there's a lot of work based around competencies so where and i spend a lot of time interviewing nearly at least nearly once every two weeks I'm interviewing for a day every all day once a day and that's and so are some of my colleagues on other days and we do we're working through kind of like on an, a competency based interview so where an awful lot of you know um people tend to fall down is they don't really do themselves justice in some of their answers mm. um and they get lost in what they're saying and competency doesn't come across the table I so suppose one of the things that might help with that is that the placement experiences as well have an oh, actual... absolutely you know like if where we are now we would support a lot of students on placement well when i say a lot we we be quite selective but we 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 
look after students every year. But definitely, I think I, what I would always say to the students before they leave, now, what did you learn here? And write it up, do a piece, a reflective piece, but keep the experience for your interviews. You know, if you if you do a good intervention or if you've attended some multidisciplinary meetings, you know, keep that there for, I suppose, answers in a competency based interview because they are they can be hard. You know, for a new graduate coming out for the first time who may not have that much experience, you know, underneath their belt, but there um, there is plenty of work. There's an, at the moment out there, there's any amount of work. Yeah. For social care workers um, and good news yeah it's really good and 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 uh yeah loads of opportunities as well for growth and i suppose um the last question martin um would be if you look back now on your degree what, what were some of the things that have really helped with your job or with working within the the sector when i go back on on the degree and, and, and i've done this a, you know, I've done this in, in numerous occasions and I think, well, what what has stuck with me over the years? Um, I would say, you know, as time has went on, obviously the, I've never lost sight of the theories that I covered in, say, psychology and sociology, you know, but group dynamics, having a good understanding of the group dynamics and anything to do with interactions with, with service users. I think I remember going back when I'd done the group dynamics, it kind of like it was a, a subject that we covered and probably didn't pay that much attention to it. But when I see it now, it applies in, in all space, in, in, in every part of your job, whether it's with your own colleagues, your peers, your management team. And definitely if you're looking after three or four service users to see how the dynamics changes on any given week. And, and one of the other guys mentioned there earlier, there's no day the same. There's never a day the same. So you have to always be in tune with what's going on. Creative studies was something else. And it's something that people really underestimate the ability to be creative in your job, being innovative around coming up with activities um, and not being afraid to, you know, explore uh, kind of like fun stuff. Yeah. You know, Important. just have fun. Yeah. Like a lot of, we're, we, we work with children and that's something that's been missing for an awful lot of them. It's just fun and being children. Yes. That's great. Thanks very much, Martin, for your insights there. Um, I suppose we'll open it up to questions and see if anybody has anything that they'd like to know. Uh, I'm just uh, thanks very much, Martin. It was great as as ever and um, very insightful. Um, and um, I think there's a, a few common themes jumping out from the different programs, you know, at all of our programs, community development, youth work, our early childhood um, and our social care programs. There's plenty of work out there at the moment. Um, so nobody seems to be struggling once they graduate to get a job in any of the sectors. And that um, every day is different. So that seems to be um, a common theme, both in community development, youth work and in social care, that every day is different. And you just don't know what the day is going to be like. So it's not predictable. Um, that can be the best part sometimes of working, both myself and Shirley have worked in social care and in youth work. And um, we tell you that when you're working with young people in particular, no day is ever the same and your plan a becomes your plan b becomes your plan c and your plan d so um and that's that's great it's you know it's never going to get boring and um, we do have a question here about um other than behavioral psychology what forms of psychology are mainly used in the sector i suppose just to answer around the modules that we we have we ha uh, we would do uh, developmental psychology psychology and well-being and then we would do social psychology and we would also look at um, mental health and how you would use psychology to work with somebody if they were having issues with their mental health. And um, really would have focused on positive and um, working with people to, as we said, um, help them reach their full potential. And that would be the same in social care and in community development youth work. So there is a lot of psychology in all of our modules um, and I would teach some of those modules. So uh, I can say they're very good. They're really interesting. And it's all about the why. 
why people uh, behave as they do. And as Martin said, groups is another one, applying psychology to the study of groups. And that's really interesting. Why do people act differently when they're in a group compared to when, they, when they're on their own? Why do people act differently online, for example, than they would uh, if they were in person? So um, that's that's one question out there. Um, somebody asked about when the interviews will be held for the social care, I presume it is. Um, the interviews for social care will be in June. Um, I believe they're going to be on uh, the start of June. So you should hear in the next couple of weeks about those. So for mature students applying for the social care programme, there is interviews. Um, there won't be um, interviews for the early ed for mature students applying for the early ed. And if you apply for community involvement youth work, it's not interviews per se, but you will be invited in um, for a information session. Um, what else is there? Uh, any other questions? Uh, somebody else is talking about how they love social care. They're working in it already. Um, and somebody else says, brilliant, Martin, they can relate to everything you're saying. So uh, thank you for that. Um, somebody else was asking about uh, coming in with uh, QQI. Is there places for QQI entry? Um, and there is for all of our programs. So um, there is usually, I would say, more mature students in community development news work than there is in social care. Would you agree, Shirley? Sorry, There's usually that. more mature students in community development youth work than there would be in social care. Um, generally, there's a, a quite a mix in both. So um, both programmes that attach and, and are attract and a nice dynamic of, of um, both direct entry and mature students. Um, what it does with the classroom means that they learn from each other and it creates a nice learning dynamic um, within that as well. OK, um, somebody else uh, uh, says being a mature student um, uh, just finished my level five. This has really helped me. Community and youth work seems to be my calling. And um, thanks to the past and present students for their input. They've opened my eyes to the opportunities available, which is great to hear. That was the whole idea tonight. I think sometimes social care is we're all very aware of social care and what it is. Um, and what I would say is a number of years ago, all people talked about was social work and most of our students came in. Martin, back when you were a student, most of the students came in and said, I want to be a social worker. Um, now people know what social care is. And I suppose it's the same idea with community development or youth work. People often don't know what the programme is. They don't realise that it's, it's, it's an amazing programme with great opportunities for you. Um, so that's why sometimes people don't apply for the programme. And that's why we have these kind of meetings to make people aware of it. I just um, uh, say a little bit more on that, Lavinia. Yeah. Denise asked about um, the difference between social workers and social care workers. I suppose social workers work with a caseload. Social care workers tend to work more directly with the service users and more directly with the people within um, the social care system. So it tends to be a, a more relationship based, direct working relationship than you might have with a social worker. And do yeah, you know, yeah. then, <laughs> sorry, Martin, go on. I'm probably I'm probably biased on this one, but absolutely, Shirley. I think you know the social care worker. They they get to kind of like live an awful lot of the experience day to day with the service user, and you know social workers probably you know they have to do an awful lot of the pen pushing, and the oversight, and they they're they're sitting in courts an awful lot. And they're, you know, in fairness, they are holding a lot of risk when they have a lot of casework on and they to try and find, you know, the best, you know, place possible for young people who are in crisis. But the social care worker does, you know, I would say like, I mean, I, I'm doing it for over 20 years and I still love it because you get little nuggets of days like this morning, for example, I went down to have a cup of tea with a service user and we we're all talking about this confirmation coming on coming up very shortly and i was asking well are you going to open the bank account because you're going to need it and it was great banter great laugh and it was great to be able to have that space you know without you know having to, be, to run off to a meeting just to be able to enjoy you know and that was all before we were going to school we were getting heading out to school so 
I do think the social care worker, there's lots of little nuggets, days of whether it be up the Wicklow Mountain or, you know, going on, on a, a, bear, a birthday party outing or something like that. You get, you get to really enjoy that. Yeah, you get to see a lot more of those yeah. um, moments that, that make it worthwhile as well, whereas the social worker is a little bit more removed yeah. Yeah. Um, from it. Um, and Shirley, would you like to just explain a little bit about the difference between, I suppose, working with young people as a youth worker as opposed to as a social care worker? So you've done both. Um, yeah. So do you want to just explain that? Because I think sometimes people are not clear on what the difference is between those two. Well, the, the difference in... in as far as I'm concerned, is youth work is almost like an interventional piece with young people, whereas social care might come um, a, a little bit later, perhaps if they haven't had the the um, positive intervention in, in between. So I find youth work a po more positive way of working with young people because it's um, a little bit earlier in the stage where they, they um, get support when needed and it positively affects their outcomes hopefully before um, they've had too much trauma, as Martin Martin was saying. Um, social care, a lot of social care work is dealing with, with uh, it would be trauma informed, it would be dealing with some quite negative life experiences and stuff like that. Whereas um, I find with youth work, we get the opportunity because it works specifically with between the ages of 10 and 24. It's quite um, focused and there's a huge amount of transition for um, young people within those areas, both in terms of getting to know themselves and getting to know their place in the world and um, then uh, everything else that kind of comes across the, the plate that time, puberty and um, life changes and life choices and all of those things. So that the right support and guidance and even, as they say, one good person during that kind of tumultuous time can really really make a difference on the positive outcomes of um, young people. So that's what I find about it is that I find it, it's it's a, a, a positive, a more positive way of, of working um, perhaps at a time when it can um, be a, um, of more benefit to young people um, and hopefully prevent some trauma um, or prevent things um, getting worse than um, it may have for sometimes social care is um, picking up the pieces afterwards, which is very important also. Oh, but yeah. uh, it, yeah. it, no, if we could it, all intervene, I think we'd all rather that. It's a huge early intervention, Shirley, isn't it? Like yeah. we would be saying that all the time, you know, oh, if only we, you know, had something maybe five years beforehand or six years beforehand. Like, I think it's a crucial time if if you, you know, support worker, you workers going in, they can get to see so much before, as you rightly said, before, you know, the, the trauma takes over mm -hmm. or it gets too overwhelming. You can spot things much quicker and you can catch yeah. things before it gets out of control. And I think it's such an important uh, role, um, that early, early intervention. I think it's because, it, you know, it, it's it just is for a young person who may be coming from, you know, maybe a home where there might be some difficulties that could be that intervention could be just a shine of, you know, that little ray of light every single week or every you know maybe on a daily basis that just to get a bit of an escapism that might prevent them going to somewhere else to get that escapism you know yeah down the road to you know and that's what it's so important that early intervention yeah, yeah even and in i think the family yeah i sorry uh just i suppose one of the things that we haven't mentioned a huge amount is the work with families as well yeah um, and i suppose that's something that community development youth work you would be working or you could be working. I worked as a family support worker for a number of years and um, you could do it in social care and you could also do it in early childhood. So I think um, that's that's something just to focus on as well, that it is possible to do that with any of these programmes as well. Yeah. Um, when we're working with people, we work with the people as a whole. So their, their, their families, their, their social circle, their, their networks, all of those things are really important in terms of the work that we're able to do or any intervention that we're able to do within those cases. So I don't think you can work with people separate from their families um, with that as well. So. And I think we're possibly out of time. Um, 
I see somebody, Linda has her hand up. Linda, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, I just, just wanted to mention something to everybody on the call. I think we're kicking us out there for a minute, Linda. Uh, no, no, I'm not kicking you out. Um, so, guys, just, just to introduce myself, I'm the Senior Manager for Student Recruitment at the University. Uh, just a quick reminder to everybody on the call today in relation to the CAO. Um, it's quite important. Perhaps there's some of you today who are on the call who haven't even opened a CAO form yet. Just to let you know, late applications are open till 2 p.m. tomorrow. So if you do want to make a late application, um, you need to do that by 2 p.m. tomorrow. But also the change of mind opens tomorrow as well. So if you've heard something here today and perhaps you didn't have community and youth on your form or you didn't have social care on your form or whatever, you will have the opportunity to go and add them tomorrow. So I feel that's really important for you um, just to make sure that you go and add um, onto your form if you know if you've heard something you like and you feel now that that the program is for you. Um, if you've questions after today, you can contact us at courses at tudublin.ie. Um, and we can advise you and give you any further advice that you might need in relation to CAO or the courses. And of course, um, Lavinia has um, all of the, the details there if you need further information as well. But listen, guys, the best of luck to everybody. And um, it's just the thanks from me. So I'll pass back to Lavinia. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, just uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, it was great to have so many people online and huge thanks, obviously, to Shirley for um, helping me to co-host today and to Martin, Michael and Kate, who were great. And I know uh, Michael and Kate have run back to work with their young people that they stepped out. Nobody was in, harmed in any way. There was <laughs> nobody left unsupervised in any shape or form um, for this to happen. But uh, I suppose it's just we felt it was important that people hear it from the students, from the graduates um, to see what it's really like um, and that's something that we really believe in at TU Dublin and within our school. The details are all there. If there's anything that comes to you afterwards, any questions that you have, please do get in touch with us. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions and um, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Bye.